day, great spouse. My name is Kadian Mazokere, and welcome to lesson number four from one of my textbooks, The Distinction Bound Student, um, grade 12. I also have grade 10 and 11. Now, um, as usual, we are going to start by revising our homework. Question one, explain what is meant by leakage from the economy. A leakage is nothing but withdrawals of money from the economy. All right, so obviously this is the opposite of an injection. Give two examples of leakages. We have imports since uh, goods come into the country, but money goes out. Savings, yes, money doesn't circulate. We put it maybe under the pillow or something. Uh, tax, uh, disposable income goes down, so it is a leakage. The next one, explain what is meant by an injection. And an injection is nothing but um, a financial boost into the economy. All right, give two examples. We have uh, investment spending by businesses. Yes, it's obvious this one is an injection because uh, businesses will be injecting money into the economy. The next one, we can say government spending. And the last one, we say exports. What happens to the economy if leakages are greater than injections? Uh, the economy will obviously shrink since what's coming in is less than what's going out. All right, the, here are the answers. You can pause and mark yourself. Now we move on to unit two. Uh, the, unit two is very, very important since this one introduces a, a, an essay type question. Um, we'll talk about it just now. Uh, so unit one had only three lessons, All right? So let's find out what it is about. It's about markets. It's a possible essay type question from 2017 to 20. Um, from if you are watching this video next year or any other year after 2020, uh, it might, it won't, it might not be, let me put it that way, an essay type question, but you will still need to know this content because it's um what can i say it's still part of the syllabus because you still have to know the, f the 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 markets all right so in an exam what do you expect how do they do you expect them to ask you they'll probably say discuss in detail uh the i almost say the four broad types of market structures all right that i can point out because there are two essay type questions, possible essay type questions in this uh, 2017 to 2020 um, amongst the 24 essays that were chosen. Uh, the other one that you could confuse with this says discuss the four broad types of market structures. You are going to do this topic in term two under microeconomics. Now, there they are talking about perfect monopoly, oligopoly and monopolistic. But in this case, They'll say, discuss in detail the four markets within, ah, discuss in detail markets within a four sector model. So what could confuse is the word markets and the number four, because there we say the four broad types of market structures. Here we are saying uh, markets within a four sector model. But what we mean here by four sector model, we are talking about uh, households, businesses, government and the for foreign sector. So those four is what we are referring to as within a four sector model. So let's find out what is it that we are talking about. But to get started, we need to know what is a market. And I think this is a term you've been defining since grade, I don't know, grade nine or even before that in EMS. All right, here we're saying a market is a mechanism. Uh, I don't normally like the definition that says a market is a place because uh, where, where buyers and sellers meet, uh, there's that definition, yes. In as far as it might be correct, it, nowadays, uh, it's, people don't necessarily have to meet, uh, if I may put it that way. So they are, because of technology, uh, we don't necessarily meet all the time, but we could participate in a market. So I would rather define it as a mechanism that brings together buyers and sellers of a good or service in order to determine the price and quantity of the goods or service that are going to be exchanged. All right. So 
first we are going to talk about the product market in this market you have to because according to the exam guidelines uh when when you are discussing the product market you have to talk about consumer goods capital goods non-durable semi-durable and durable goods we'll go deeper the next one is the factor market yes we'll learn just now what is a factor market i'm sure you remember we did this in lesson one as well the next one is a financial market uh, the next one or oh, in that financial market you need to discuss the money market you need to discuss capital markets and then the last one is the foreign exchange market all right so let's start with the first one product market what is a product market all right so we can say goods and services are traded on this on the product market so what is a product market it's a market where goods and services are traded simple as that households government and the foreign sector purchase these goods and services from firms on this market yes that's true you saw when we did the secular flow model we said after we get our income we pay tax and after paying tax we then spend and mostly what do we spend our money on uh oh sorry before we spend we save uh that is if we are uh, surplus units and if we are deficit units, we borrow. But at the end of the day, we are going to spend money on the product market. So it is a market where goods and services are traded. The next point is services are non-tangible actions that uh, satisfy uh, people's needs and wants. So they are different from goods because goods are tangible. Examples of services are those offered by an accountant, an educator, a doctor, a driver, etc. Forces of demand and supply determine the equilibrium price and quantity. So in this market, uh, when we buy a fruit for two rands, uh, no one has really decided on that price, but forces of demand and supply. All right. The next point, goods are tangible items and they include consumer goods, capital goods, durable goods, and non-durable goods. We'll go into detail with these ones just now. Households purchase consumer goods for consumption and businesses purchase capital goods for use in the production process. So already we see a distinction between consumer goods and capital goods, but still we are going to go deeper with this one. All right, let's go and have a look at consumer goods. What are they? All right, so anything that you are going to buy from a shop uh, as a person, you representing households, that item, if you buy it for consumption, it is a consumer good. So a good example is food, clothes, you know, all those things, they are consumer goods. Let's see. Consumer goods are products that are purchased for consumption by consumers to satisfy their needs and wants, which is what I just said. They are alternatively called final goods because they are the end result of production. And when 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 uh, capital goods are purchased by businesses, um, we call that capital formation. When that happens, the goal is to produce a consumer good. Like look at factories, they manufacture clothes they manufacture cars, uh, those clothes, those cars, they are consumer goods. So it is an end result. So at the end of the day, we say they are final goods. Examples of, okay, we have clothes. I talked about clothes. We have food. Let's move on to capital goods. We always say these goods are not produced for their own sake. They are produced to make other goods, e.g. machinery, right? So when we buy an oven, if we are a bakery, the oven is not the end result. The, we don't buy it for, um, for, for its own sake. We buy it because there's something that we are targeting to produce. And that something is a consumer good, right? Now we can make intermediate goods with consumer goods, with, with capital goods, uh, for instance, a grinding mill is a capital good. It grinds maize into millimill. 
but the millimil is not the end result the millimil we we want it to make pop so pop is the end result all right so we can make intermediate goods with capital goods all right the next point is capital goods always um open a pathway to increased efficiency and productive capacity facilitating improved services as well as new incomes and um, employment for firms and households the act of purchasing capital goods i've mentioned it already is known as capital formation which is denoted by the symbol i right let's move on to non-durable goods these are goods that can only be used once e.g uh, an apple so we cannot reuse these goods we we consume it once and it's gone you see it's different from semi-durable goods because these goods can last for more than once you can use them for more than once but not for a very long time so they can you you use a chalk like in this case you can use a pen but if you use a pen now you can put it away and use it again tomorrow you can use it next month you can use it you know a couple of times but uh you wouldn't be using a pen uh, every day for a year unless if you're just making one tick and put it away tomorrow one tick put it away yes that way but if i you if you are using it like to write some notes and then you put it away tomorrow you can continue using it but it will come to a point where it's finished but you see you don't use it only once uh, you use it a couple of times and then it comes to an end but I, this reminds me of one of my learners once said, but say the ink uh, only you, you use it once. And um, I said, okay, you can take it that way to say um, when you make a mark in a book, that ink is used once. But in this case, I'm saying a pen. So ink is not a pen, a pen ink is part of a pen so a pen is a good example of so in an example this in an exam this can be arguable if you say uh give give examples of non-durable goods and then you say ink you know people could argue about that one so i always say to my learners uh and i'm saying that to you as well avoid things that um you know that one would say yes it is and another person would say no it's not take simple things like food it's as easy as a non-durable good because you only eat it once a, a sip is available for one person so it's non-durable uh, so a pen would be a good example on semi-durable the next one is durable goods yes a good example chalkboard right there um i always use a car you'll see on the internet they'll be advertising a 1964 mercedes benz whatever whatever uh, as a vintage car so if if it's older than you then wow it is durable okay now the next thing you need to know is a factor market which is on the other side and uh, it is a market where factors of production are traded and um so households are selling their factors of production on this market businesses and government purchase them on this market okay now on this factor market we say um the price of and and quantity is also determined by inter interaction of demand and supply it's as simple as that but now uh, we might as well go deeper into discussing the things that are being sold on this market and um i i don't wish to you know spend much time on this because uh we've been doing this since grade 11. so we have land land is one of the items uh that is sold on this market land we say it's natural resources and its remuneration is um remuneration for land is economic rent yes Okay, that's all I can say on this one. I'm not going to go through all this, but you can read if you want. The next one is labor. Labor is a measure of the work done by human beings. And again, I'm not going to go deep onto this one. 
uh, it's as easy as wages and salaries being um, remuneration for land. The next one is capital and capital is we've just talked about capital just now capital is man-made physical goods used to produce other goods and services remuneration for capital is called interest the last one is entrepreneurship and uh, this is the process of be bringing land labor capital together uh, in the in order to produce a good or a service and the remuneration for this is profit so if you're an entrepreneur you're going to make a profit all right, the next one, um, which has two things, money market and capital market, you see the only difference is very, very, very small. All right, the financial uh, market consists of banks, insurance companies, pension funds, and the JSE. Um, funds from surplus units are channeled to deficit units in this market. And surplus units are those firms or households in the economy that do not spend all their income. Um, they are called the savers in the economy. Savers deposit their surplus funds into financial institutions. The institutions then use the money to lend to deficit units, which are called borrowers. So all this is happening in this market. And then deficit units are those households, firms, and government in the economy that are looking for more funds. Uh, so it's like you draw up a budget, uh, you have 10,000, but you need 12,000. So you are going to borrow 2,000. But from whom are you borrowing the 2,000? This 2,000 is made available for those who are in surplus. Uh, in That is someone who has 10,000 just like you, but they only need 8,000. So they can save the 2,000 and that 2,000 can be given to you. Okay. Right. So how does this happen? Okay, depending on how it happens, then we can call it, or should I say, how does it happen? Or should I say, uh, what's the duration? Okay, so we have the money market, which is just like the capital market, but the difference is very, very small. The difference is just one word, and the word is long, the word is short. All right, this is used by participants as a means of borrowing and lending in the short term from a few days to just less than three years. That's what we say here in economics, okay? Now, others may want to say three years is not short term. Yes, we say three years is short term. In short, it is a market for short term savings and loans. The SARB is a key institution in this market. Same applies to the other market, which is the capital market. Kinds of securities that, um, that change hands in this market. We have treasury bills, we have reserve bank debentures, we have bankers all this yes all right let's go to the other one the other one like i said the only difference is this one here i i i should have um i should have done that okay i should have underlined on the previous yes uh long term this is the only difference and then so it's a means of borrowing and lending in the long term i can repeat the same way i defined the previous one and just change the word long term all right uh, in short, it is long-term deposits or and borrowings. Now we are having a good example, mortgage bonds. The JSE is a key institution in this market. Right. Uh, then we have, um, in effect, uh, in, in an open economy, foreign currency is needed to facilitate transaction. I am very, very sorry. I'm, I'm even getting confused as to what I'm talking about. This one is supposed to be the, I'm very, very sorry. Yo. Okay. So this is supposed to be a foreign exchange market. So I'm looking here and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. All right. You forgive my handwriting. Can you take this one out? All right. The foreign exchange market. Uh, so what is this market? It is a market where one currency can be exchanged for another as simple as that This is a market where we trade rands for dollars pounds for euro and so on the amount um, That is received on exchange depends on the exchange rate Yes, and the exchange rate itself is determined by 
forces of demand and supply. If more people want to buy the rent, it appreciates. If many people are selling the rent, it depreciates. And there are so many reasons why the rent can be oversupplied or over demanded. Okay, uh, I'm thinking of one right now. In 2010, when it was when South Africa was hosting the FIFA World Cup, there was high demand for the rent because many people wanted to come to South Africa. So as a result, the rent appreciated. Another thing, when um, when Jacob Zuma um, did a cabinet reshuffle, and then um, made David Fan whoever the finance minister uh, people out there were like oh let's de-invest we, we we don't want to invest in south africa anymore so so many people were selling their what uh, south african assets or like taking their money out of south africa so as a result they had to supply a lot of the rent and demand another currency so that is why you see when uh, a president says something if people feel like this is good for the economy. The, the rand is going to go up. If people feel like this is bad for the economy, the rand is going to go down. And what causes that is simply, I'm trying to locate, yes, these are the two words. When people feel like this is good for the economy, they demand more and the, the rand goes up. When people feel like this is bad for the economy, they sell the rand. Okay, so they sell the rent. In this case, they buy it. So when many people buy the rent, it goes up. When many people are selling it, it goes down. It's as easy as that. Right, so you can get hold of foreign currency um, through any commercial banks. Uh, and, and we call that a bureau de change. And you'll find that FNB, ABSA, NetBank, Capitec, Standard Bank, you'll find out that these banks have these bureau de chain. Uh, okay, so it takes us to our homework. Um, a market for short-term savings and loans is known as, yes, we did this one, so you should remember. Anyway, let me not go through this. You can read for yourself. And uh, I'd like to thank you for joining me in this lesson. Um, please make sure you do the homework and make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to be... Yes, uploading more of such lessons. Uh, I'll also do it for grade 10 and 11. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you.